what a day this has been. I can't even begin to tell you what my day has been like. It's been kind of intense. It's been intense. I won't even lie. If you guys can even see me, shout out somewhere in the uh, in the in the uh, in the chat. Say like thumbs up. We see you. It's working. Everything is uh, you know everything is happening the way it should. It's been a tricky one. My God, you know th the entire process of trying to do this YouTube thing is always about overcoming problems. And, uh, and trying to figure out ways to get things right. And, and sometimes hurdles are in your way, right? They're in your way. Uh, it's been seriously in my way today, a lot. But the way that we overcome those hurdles is, is the way that we will grow our YouTube channels. So if you're in the live stream and you can hear me, and if it's working, thumbs up. I thank you so much for tolerating the crap I put you through today. I didn't mean to. I even, it was so crazy. I took off all of my rings. They're all off. I, I never do that. It never happens. The thing I want to talk to you about today, it's so crazy. I started this morning. I woke up at, my girlfriend could tell me. It was probably, yell out, Megan. How, what time did I wake up? Four o'clock, she says. I woke up at 4 a.m. because I, I started to realize that I was really close to that 15,000 subscriber mark. And I've been trying to hit this. This was what I hit. I wanted to hit 10,000 in a year, but I realized that I might be able to hit um, 15,000. And I really dove into um, trying to get this right. I was like, man, if I could hit 15,000, because I started this channel on July 18th. And I, my goal was to really show you guys that there's, there were, you can build a successful YouTube channel in 2019. You can do it. You can do this. I know it feels sometimes like YouTube is just against you and everything is so hard, but you can do it. And I figured if I could do it, you guys could do it. So I just wanted to blaze that way through. And I, and I, and I have to throw a huge shout out before I say anything else to my pal, Brian G. Johnson. You all know Brian. He's in the chat. I don't even have the words to tell you um, what he means to me. That he is not only a friend, he is... Um, a comrade, a supporter, a mentor, a teacher, a put whatever word you want in there, um, who has helped me find the path. And the least that I could do in return is to bring his message forward in the way that I've used it and try to bring it to you to help you guys get your channels to grow. Because I wouldn't be here without Brian G. Johnson. He, he is the reason I am here. So I want to get really quickly into what we're talking about today. And that's growing a channel. We're growing a channel. We're going to do a couple things today. And there is a link in the description that you can click on. Um, if Andrew's in the chat, Brian's in the chat, you want to grab and post that. You can ask a question or whatever you want to do. Put your channel name in there. Because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to answer some questions uh, about growing a channel. But I'm also going to pull up some channels and I'm going to point out some things that maybe I can help you with to make your channels grow faster. Because the biggest thing that I see creators out there asking is why, 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 why am I not gaining views? Why am I not gaining subscribers? Why is my channel not growing fast enough? But I can tell you right now, I'm here to answer some of those whys. And I, and I promise those answers are easier than you think. They may not be the answers you want, but those answers are easier than you think. And if I can get you all to start forgetting about, about YouTube and start thinking about your channel and your mission and your path, we can do this. You can be just like me. I want every one of you to be able to post up that I grew my channel to 30,000 subscribers in a year. I grew my channel to 100,000 subscribers in a year. You can do every bit of this. I'm nothing special. I am nothing special. All I did was I knuckled down. So I want to show you the things to knuckle down on. All right? That's what we're going to do today. So listen, one of the first things I want to talk about is, uh, is my music still, music's good? We're down? We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, it's been a crazy day. So if I get some of the things wrong, I apologize. I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that you need to understand, um, 
We might have some strong lights in here. I apologize. I've moved things around during the course of the day. I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that you need to understand. As a creator, when you come to this platform, things are confusing. It's hard. You're like YouTube, and there's like PewDiePie, and there's Casey Neistat, and, you know, pick your poison, right? There's everyone out there doing something that you go, uh, is this is is that is this what I do? How do I do it? What am I supposed to do? And it's confusing. I want to bring that into focus for you. Listen to me. Every one of you has something to offer to people in the world. You just have to find what that is. You just have to find what that is. And we're going to work less on thinking about YouTube. And we want to find that thing that connects. Because here's an interesting thing that I'm going to present for you. Is it doesn't matter what YouTube thinks. It matters what your audience thinks. And that's something that I don't think is really stressed enough to creators when they come to the platform, right? Because you think about monetization, AdSense, how do I make money? What do I got to do? Is it my CTR? Is my thumbnails? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. It's so confusing. The reason I was able to get to where I ended up this morning is Brian helped me get all of that stuff and push it off the plate, move it aside, like right, like the vegetables you don't like. Those are keys and pe- peas and carrots or broccoli. Pick your vegetable, push them aside. We're going to talk about meat and potatoes. And what the reality is, is you need to build channels that connect with a very specific target audience. And that may be something you've heard before, but I want to express it in a way that maybe you haven't heard before so that it clicks because I can tell you it it was the secret to me getting to 15,000 subscribers, okay? Let's talk about you. Let's talk about you guys, right? Let's say we are, uh, we're going to go over here. Um, Let's talk about what YouTube wants. Let's put this over here, over here. Is it over there? It's over there. YouTube wants three things. It wants you to bring people to the platform. It wants you to get them watching. And it wants you to keep them watching. That's it. That's it. You know why YouTube wants you to do that? Because they want to serve those people advertisement. And the longer you can keep people watching, the more ads they can serve. So that's it. That's all of, that is all of it. That is all of it. That's your whole mission. Do those three things, YouTube is happy. Don't worry about the rest. You worry about CTR, you worry about thumbnails. Do those three things well, YouTube will reward your channel. But then you go, well, okay, well, I get that, Daniel. That makes sense. I know that, right? I got to, you know, bring people to the platform. Even if you don't bring them, just get them watching and keep them watching. Maybe they're already here. Maybe they were watching another video and they found my video as a suggested video. I get it. But what does that mean? What does that mean for me? How do I accomplish that mission? It's actually kind of simple. You have to think about your channel and what your channel needs to do. And it's really easy. Tell people what your channel is about. Make sure you define who your audience is and why they should watch. The better you do those three things, those three things, the better this part starts happening. Does that make sense? I, that probably seems like, oh, you're being really simple. I'm not. I'm not. The reason my channel grew so fast is I took all of this, six steps, and I lived it. I lived it. I wouldn't let go. I sunk my teeth in, and I wouldn't let go. And that's why I grew so quickly. And that might seem, may seem kind of esoteric and weird, like, yeah, yeah, it's always weird, like, bring people to the platform, get them watching, and, like, how am I supposed to do that, Daniel? It sounds fancy, but you're using just, like, fancy terms, like, you're not telling us exactly how to do that. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. One of the biggest things that people get wrapped up in is YouTube, CTR, analytics, how I'm supposed to... I want you to let all of that go. I want you, as a content creator, to think about who your target audience is. 
And I don't mean the people who are in your, you know, your comment section. Those are fantastic people. That's your community. I'm talking about all the people that you haven't reached yet. All the people who haven't, uh, they haven't seen your videos. They don't know who you are. How do you reach them? Here's where almost every creator makes the same mistake. Let's say that you are, let me show you this example. This is you. This is you. You're right here. This is you, right? Maybe you're that guy that, or girl, shout out to the ladies. Maybe you are into travel and sports. Maybe those are two big things that are huge in your life. Huge. Maybe that makes your day. And you go, hey, I'm into sports and I'm into travel and I'm, I want to make a YouTube channel. I want to, uh, let's do it. Let, I'm in. So I'm going to make a travel video. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Let's make a travel video. And within not very long, boom, along comes this guy. That one viewer or two viewers or ten viewers who may not be into everything you're into. Maybe they're not into sports, but they're into cars, but they're also into travel, right? So the overlap of the thing you do and the thing that they do, that overlap, you connect it. You connect it because you were into sports and travel. They were into cars and travel, but you both were into travel. So you made a video and they responded. That was your target audience. You made a travel video, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, that video, that crushed it. I got, pick your number. Maybe that did 200 views. Maybe that did 2,000 views. Maybe that did 200,000 views. All you know is you look back and went, I love this video. It did a lot for my channel. I'm not used to doing that well. But you're also into, you're into sports and you go, hey, hey I'm going to test the waters and maybe I'll make a sports video. So you do that. You make a sports video. And along comes the next guy who's into maybe guitar and into sports. And you go, oh my gosh. I just connected with another viewer. That last guy, he loved my cars and travel video, but he was into cars, but I was into travel. We shared something, but at this new thing, I did sports, but he was into guitar. I didn't really share that, but we connected on the level of sports. The problem is the guy who came in, the viewer, number one up here, see that one right over here? He's going to look down at your new sports video and go, yeah, that was kind of cool. Are you going to do more travel videos? What, what happened? I thought we were doing, I thought you were a travel video channel. And you go, no, 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 no. I, I, I want to reach everybody. I'm going to do every, I'm going to make videos for everybody. There is the crux of where most creators fail because they try to please everybody. And if you're so busy trying to please everybody, you're going to please no one. You have to decide what it is you're going to do, what your channel's about, who your target audience is, how you're going to reach them, and be on a very specific course dedicated to doing that. Because if you looked at the other one, maybe, so maybe the guy who's into sports and guitar, it'd be nice if he watched your video, but maybe he's not, he's just not your guy, right? Maybe he's not your guy. Because maybe the guy who was into guitar and travel would have something in common with the person who was into cars and travel, and then you'd have connection. Do you see what I'm saying here? Connection target audience, the people out there that you are trying to reach. This is one of the things that I think is, is not really well explained to all of us coming to the platform. We hear like connect with your audience as if they are some kind of group that are all sitting in one big room together, like a bunch of people that all look the same and they go, oh, well, that's my target audience, right? They're right there. You know, it's like all the guys in Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know how many of you guys spend time in Chuck E. Cheese. I, I apologize because you're probably fathers. But they're, they are not the same. They are very different people spread across the globe, living de very different lives, having very different careers, interests, and passions. But the one thing that they connect on, let's say it's travel in this case, 
that's where you step in as a YouTube channel, as a YouTube content creator. And you say, you know what I'm going to capitalize on? I am going to capitalize on the fact that all these different people have this one thing in common. And I'm going to make a channel that focuses on that interest. And I'm going to make sure that I make a better channel than the competition. So when they stumble across me, I'm the travel channel. Now, tra the travel could be anything. That could be any word. That could be gaming. That could be food. That could be p p put in... Put in anything you want. I've got friends out there. Paul Peck Drywall. He does drywall. Nothing but drywall and mudding and taping techniques. I have friends out there. Animal Facts. They do nothing but animal videos, pet videos. Because they focus in on the thing that their audience connects on. So when I talk to creators who are like, why aren't my channel, why aren't my videos getting pushed out? Why isn't my channel growing? I say, well, have you really dialed in on one target audience and I need you guys to ask yourself that now because everything I'm going to tell you in this next hour is dependent upon you understanding these things because this advice isn't for one channel it's for all channels it's all channel I feel that every channel has the same mission I don't care if you're selling a product. I don't care if you're out there and you're a beauty channel. I don't care if you just came to YouTube as, a, as Will Smith the actor. I don't care why you came to YouTube, but the minute you created a, a YouTube channel, you became a content creator. And you need to take this thing seriously because all that other stuff doesn't matter. You need to take this thing seriously and connect with your target audience, all right? Now, that might sound kind of funny, right? We were talking about this. I said this earlier. There is a few things that YouTube is looking for, right? It wants to know who your target audience is, why they should watch, and, uh, and what your channel's about. And sometimes I think people take those three things and go, well, yeah, I think I do that well. I think I do that well. I thought I did that well. But, the, but reality is, when I put that simple list up, where is it? Over here? I'm going this way. It's over here. Here's your list. What is it about? Who's your audience? Why should they watch? That's like three simple questions. I call that the value proposition. And, and I'd like to say that I made it up, but I didn't. I reach out to channels when I first talk to them. Because I'm a, I'm a channel consultant for TubeBuddy. And I do it on my own. I, you know, I have a website and everything. This is what I do. But I talk to channels and I say, like, tell me about your channel, right? What is the thing that you do? Who are you trying to reach? What is your channel about? Why should they watch your channel? I get paragraphs. I get paragraphs. Well, you know, we're kind of a child and channel and the this and the toys and I do and sometimes and, and then we do vlogging and one sentence. One sentence. The harder it is for you to explain to me what your channel is about, the harder it is for a viewer to understand what your channel is about. And it isn't about me. I want you guys to draw your channel into focus so that without a doubt, within seconds, anybody lands there on your channel, they understand. I get it. I get it. Clarity, focus, determination and consistency. That'll get you there. That will get you there. One of the things that I was talking to Brian about today <laughs> and every day was perspective. And this is what's going to hold a lot of channels back. Perspective is a really hard thing. And I want you to embrace this. I love every one of you out there. I want every one of your channels to grow. I want every one of your channels to surpass mine. If I can help you do that, I am here to do that. But one of the things that, that gets lost in translation is perspective because you hear so many things about what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, how to do it, how to do it right. Maybe it's your thumbnails, maybe it's your CTR, maybe it's your analytics. You only have to do a few things really well. You only have to do a few things really well. YouTube is easy. What is hard is you have to do a few things really well over and over and over again. It's like a diet. It's like a diet. 
I've been on so many channels where I reach out and and, and channels go like Daniel. I've done the things you've said. I've I've, I've got my seat. I've got my thumbnails right. I've got my my titles right. I've I've got I've got my optimization. I've done my structure. It's it's perfect. I've done everything you said, but I'm still not getting the subscribers and views that you said I would. I'm like, well, how long have you been doing it? Three weeks. Excuse me while I partake in water. I would do a spit take, but it's a new webcam. Three weeks! Three weeks. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes doing the thing that most people can't repeatedly, right? If you're on a diet and you were doing it for only a few weeks, you're like, it, you got to keep doing it to see those results. And they're not fast. Sometimes they are. Sometimes you get lucky and things work out. But it's about doing the thing repeatedly and staying consistent with it that will get you where you want to be. That's what got me here. When everything in my world changed, I said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to keep doing what I do. And I'm going to keep parlaying off of that success. And I refuse to give up on it and I had good people on my side. That's why I'm here. I'm hoping to be on your side, too. I had guys like Brian G. Johnson and Nick Nimmin and Dean Nimmin helping me make this stream happen. We failed today. I tried to start the stream earlier, and it crashed. None of the software was working properly. It went to, I won't say Helena Handbasket. Yes, I will. I just said it. Helena Handbasket. So something had to happen fast, and we had to correct for the crash collision course we were on. And we did. I reached out to everyone I knew and I tried to figure out every way possibly to make this dream happen. So that I could come here and tell you, you need to know what your channel's about. You need to know who your target audience is. And you need to tell them why, you should, why they should watch your channel. It's so important. I need you to grasp. I need you to, I need you to grasp that. And your content is everything. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Does that message make sense? I'm looking over to the chat. I've got the chat going over here. Does all of this make sense? I want you guys to simplify. I want you to let go of everything that you thought was holding you back. I want you to let go of YouTube. I want you to let go of all the analytics. And I want you to think about what your channel's about, who your target audience is, and how we can connect with them. I'm going to pull up some channels. We've got questions. We've got channels. You guys have been waiting. I want to show you some of the things that I've been thinking about, and I want to see if we can make some of this stuff happen. All right? Let's see what you guys are doing out there. Um, I'm looking in the chat right now. I've got a questionnaire, so let me pull the questionnaire up, which has been people who have been waiting here. Thank you so much for waiting so long. Um, it's been a long day and I've made you guys wait and I didn't mean to, <laughs> sometimes things go right and sometimes things go wrong. And with that, and with that, it's tough. It's not perfect. The world is not perfect. Um, I'm looking through the, uh, the questions. Let me see what I got here. My very first question that I had today, we're going to honor is from uh, Lautado TV. If I were to collab with a channel with a ton of subscribers, would that be a little awkward considering I have very few subscribers? Let me tell you something. There's a man in the chat room right now named Brian G. Johnson. And on my channel, you'll actually see there's videos that don't get a lot of views. But the reason I started my channel is I reached out to Brian G. Johnson, who's huge. And I said, I want to do a video with you. I kind of play guitar, and I have this idea for a song, and I'd love to do it with you. And I'll do all the work, and I, I, I think I can do this. But I was so bad at telling him what I had in my head that he said no. He said no. My good pal, Brian G. Johnson, told me no. Because I didn't explain myself well. I didn't have myself put together. And I came back, I figured it out, I actually wrote part of the song, and I dropped the chorus on him and went, what if it sounded like this? What do you think about this? This is what I'm thinking. And I sold him. And that's how I made that collab happen. But your actual question is, would that help my channel, right? Would that be a little awkward? It wouldn't, or he said, the actual question from Latata, would, would that be awkward? No. I'll tell you this, and I've said this to Brian, Brian's been with me. That 
collab we did started my channel. Started it. And I gained a hundred and maybe fifty subscribers in the first day, and then I tanked. Because I didn't have anything to follow it up. It was about content. It was about connecting with people. It took a while to build that up. But do you think that that's awkward? Heck no. Heck no. I want every one of you to do the things that you think is uncomfortable, that you think is awkward, that you think is harder than the guy next to you. Because the way you're going to beat the other channels in your niche is to try something that they haven't done. Be yourself. Be unique. Be strong. Don't be afraid. I wasn't afraid. It took a lot of convincing. Brian will tell you. It took a lot of convincing. I had to sell myself. I had to convince him that I wasn't just some crazy long-haired guy who was like, hey, let's do a collab. I, you know, Because what happens with bigger creators is they look at when someone comes to them and says, let's do a collab. They go, oh, great. Here comes this guy who knows I'm bigger, and he thinks that I'm going to help him grow his channel. And I didn't want that. I said, Brian. I don't want that. I want to do something that you haven't done. I, I'll do all the work. I'll do all the work. It's, and he, he did a ton of work. We worked 12 days straight. But I said, I'll, I'll make it. I'll figure it all out. And I'll put it together and I'll edit it. And he ended up being half of it because I sold him on it. Um, but it, I, I brought it to him as something. You have to come to people that you collab with in a way that they haven't seen. Do something bigger. Do something grander. Do something that makes your audience go, whoa. Did you guys check out the most recent um, diss tracks that we did back and forth? Brian and I were like doing rap tracks. I am not a rapper. I'm not a rapper. I am not a rapper. Neither is Brian, by the way, which is why I kicked his and Nick's butt in that particular session. But we can argue about that later. But the thing that that happened from was Brian said to me, he put out a video and he's like, dude, do a diss track telling everybody that I stole your ideas. I'm like, I, I can't do that. But we did. But we did. It was different. It was unique. It put our stamp on the thing we do and made it different from the rest. Do that. Be unique. Be different. Think in ways that other people don't think. And that is what will get you the collabs, will get you the views, will get you the subscribers. It will. I promise. I promise. And not just working with other people. Do that when you're sitting alone. How can I be unique? How can I be different? How can I do this different than these guys over here? Because I just want, YouTube wants me to bring people to the platform, get them watching and keep them watching. How do I do that? How do I do that? If you can do it, you're done. you've got it. You've got it made. You've got it made. Let me look at another question here. What do we got over here? Uh, question number two of 27. This might take a while. Andrew, we're going along. Um, Nintendo Gamer 101. I love you, brother. I thank you for so much for hanging out and being part of the community. Community, Daniel, you say not to upload different content. Well, I have three game series going on on my channel. Isn't it a bad thing to have that many different games going on on one channel at once? I'm going to tell you this. When it comes to running a gaming channel, that is one of the hardest niches to be in. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be perfectly honest. And I want you to know that this comes from a place of love. Gaming is hard because a lot of young creators go, oh, I can screen capture and I can put myself down in the corner and I can talk about the game just like my heroes do. And then I can have a gaming channel. But everything we just talked about before, be unique, be different. Find ways that you can be discovered so that your content stands apart from those other gaming channels. Do I think that trying different games will hurt your channel? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. That's what your data is for, right? Because maybe one, sh one specific game you start making videos about and your ch gaming channel does really well for those videos. But that data is right there. It's right there. You can look at it and YouTube tells you what you did right. You just need to learn to find that data and embrace it and go, oh, <laughs> I, I did right. I did something right. Let's do that again. Oh, when a video goes up and it doesn't do well, don't take it personally. It just didn't work. It just didn't work. So we stick with things that do work and we try to lose the things that don't work. Even within the structure of the video, that's been my whole channel purpose. To teach you to make better structure, better content, edit better. Get people watching, keep them watching, right? 
Those are the things that YouTube rewards us for. So do I think changing games? Yes or no? You tell me which games are starting to connect for you and maybe harp on those. Maybe make a playlist strategy around those that I'm going to talk about very shortly in a couple of minutes here. It's not about the game. It's about how well your content connects with your target audience, okay? Focus on that. That is everything. Um, back into the questionnaire, we see that the next question is <sighs> Nintendo Gamer again. I'm going to skip over you, brother. I'll get back to you. i got to have a few different questions in here. Uh, Sue Corey, can you make edits with Fillmore? This is, we're not doing Fillmore today. I will do this on my channel. I know when you see me in my face, you go like, Fillmore. I'm going to do Fillmore questions uh, on my own streams, not on Two Buddies. Um, Windy City Twins. Regarding how you grow a channel, how much does adding subtitles, closed captions, impact SEO video metadata? And he got onto longer description here. Let me tell you something about sub, uh, subtitles, captions. Um, they're important. They're important. I'm going to tell you right now. They're important. Some people would argue with me. What you have to understand is that YouTube not only reads your titles, it reads your thumbnails. When you put words in your thumbnails, YouTube uses the Google Brain AI, and it can actually read the words that you put in your thumbnail. It can actually look at the pictures and decide if they're racy, adult, violent, funny. So YouTube has all these ways of looking at your content. It's got all these screening processes. And the fact that YouTube <laughs> actually creates cla captions, closed captions for your content without you doing a thing. You upload a video and there's these auto-generated closed captions. It's because YouTube hears what you're saying. How scary is that? It's like the Terminator. <laughs> but I don't want you to think that of that in a scary way. I want you to think of that in terms of, all right, well, if it can hear what I'm saying, I want to use that to my advantage. Maybe if my video is about, I'm going to use my channel here, right? Because I'm going to say film or a dissolve effect. Maybe in the first few sentences of my video, I need to say, if you want to learn about the film or a dissolve effect... I, today we're going to go into depth about that. And I need to use those words so that YouTube will hear it and it will read it, right? If you go into your closed captions and you actually tweak those and modify them at all, you'll actually be able to generate the closed caption uh, insignia with your newest upload. So I always recommend when you're uploading, go into closed captions, edit them slightly, three letters, one letter. Just change it a bit and re-upload it. Just say, okay. Change the first word to a capital letter, and it automatically gets uploaded with closed captions. Because 12% of my audience, from my data, uses closed captions when they watch my videos. Sometimes that's hearing impaired. Sometimes that's people who can't turn the volume up and they just want to read along. The better your closed captions are, the more it will reach another audience that maybe a video without them didn't. And when you're a small channel... Every single percentage counts because we're playing percentages, right? We're not PewDiePie. We're not the biggest channel in the world. We're trying to build something against the giant. We're, we're Davy with the stone and the, we're whipping it in circles. We're trying to make that work, right? We're trying to take down the giant with our little Davy, Davy and Goliath, right? David and Goliath. Use the percentages. Anything that can help you, even if it's 0.3%, I'll take it. Because all those 3.3% add up. They add up. So do them. And I'm going to get into that more in a minute. So yes, absolutely. Uh, next question. How are you guys doing in the chat? David and Goliath. It is. I said David and Goliath because I grew up with that. Um, <laughs> the next question is, uh, let me see right here. I'm clicking forward. Um, memes by BG. My channel can't grow. What should I do? Well, let's see. I, that's a really broad question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold this one and I'll come back to it. I'll tell you why your channel isn't growing. Um, there's always a reason, and it's simpler than you think. Exploring with the Nug asked, it's so hard not to compare yourself to other content creators whose, con whose channel is taking off. The growth of my channel is so slow that I feel like it'll take years to achieve the ultimate goal of making full-time. 
a full-time living of what I do? Am I doing something that is crippling my channel growth? What's holding me back? Let's do it. Let's do it, Nug. You here? You ready to do this? Let's go over. Anyone want to go over and check out? Let me see if I can find um, Exploring the Nugs channel here. Um, maybe we can. Maybe we can see what... There's always a reason. There is always a reason. And here's the thing is, I want you guys to embrace the things that you might be doing wrong. Um, because that was the thing that held me back. I thought, well, I'm doing it all right. I'm doing everything right. And still I'm not growing. And it wasn't until people said, you're not doing everything right. You have some things that you could do better that I started seeing the path. Let's go take a look over here and let's take a look at um, Exploring the Nugs channel. And let's see what he's doing. Okay. Could you guys see okay? Um, Exploring the Nug, what did I say? The three things that YouTube wants is to bring people to the platform. Keep them on the platform. Keep them watching. Get them watching. Keep them watching. What does he have? for let's let's bring let me get a little drawing uh, i'm gonna draw all over your channel my friend i don't mean that as an insult i just like scribbling i learned this from brian g johnson he said when in doubt scribble um so i'm gonna scribble on your channel and i and i i hope if i can do this if i can do it properly um right here in your channel art the three links you have up there is one for donations your website donations facebook and uh patreon so when we told you, keep people watching, the first thing you did was start sending them somewhere else. Get them off the platform. This is one of the things we talk about. Now, if you're doing that in your channel art, what's going on in your videos? If I go right to your homepage and go, wow, you're already telling people to go somewhere else when we know YouTube says keep them here, what are you doing wrong? I'm going to go down through your channel. The very top things I love that you have as a non-subscriber, you put a video up there. Everyone out there, follow this path. There are these things that you can do that you can, as a non-subscriber, put a channel trailer, or you can put uh, the top performing video, something that converts well right up here. Big, bold, boom. Look at that. Think about that. But I'm going to subscribe, and let's see what happens uh, for when I subscribe. I'm going to hit the bell, and I'm going to reload this page because I want to see what this channel looks like when I'm not just a new viewer, right? Now I'm a subscriber. Boom, he helped put up the clean water three months ago. Why is your new video not right here, right? I'm a new subscriber. I'm coming to your page. I haven't been here in a while. I just want to check out the new video, and you've got one from three months old? Come on, give me something. Then I scroll down, and you've got uploads. You've got most popular... It takes me scrolling this far to see playlists, playlists, playlists. My, I cannot say this enough. Let me talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about perspective because it's so important. When you think about growing your channel, there's some questions you should get, ask yourself. How old is your channel, right? Because if you're only out there for... I'm six months, and you're like, how come I'm not growing? Well, you're six months old. Keep making content. How much content have you published? Are you have 20 videos up? Do you have 100 videos up? Because I personally think that you don't start to see success until you build something that people can get invested in, which means you can't put up 26 videos and say, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not driving the views I want. Well, of course you aren't. You're only 26 videos in. Keep going. You've got it. You can do this. Keep building on that, right? Another thing is like, how well optimizes your channel? We just pulled up Exploring the Nug, and we're not calling you out, my friend. I'm equally as guilty. You're doing things that are against what YouTube wants. Bring them to the platform. Get them watching. Keep them watching. Don't send them elsewhere. I want you guys to think about your channels as more than one video. The way channels work is they are multiple videos that all help each other grow if you keep putting up videos every week going is this the one no all right well how about is this the one nope <laughs> that, that ain't it <laughs> i've been there i've done that trust me no one has done that more than me it was once i started realizing that everything works together find your target audience who are you making videos for Make those videos over and over again. Keep making videos targeted at one audience. 
and make those videos work together. Because playlists are important. We'll talk about that more. Um, another thing I want to talk to you guys about, while we're here, viral hits. You know that thing is, I think that you guys sometimes think that you want to make a video and it's like, I just need it to hit. I need a viral hit. I need a one video. Please, Lord. I am down here begging. I will sell my shoes, pets, and children if you will give me one video that will hit a million views. <laughs> Amen. I've been there. I have worked with channels. I've helped channels that had that one big viral hit. And then that viral hit stopped driving views. And guess where they were? Right back where they started. Right back where they started. I don't want you to be that. One viral hit will not save your channel. I want you to build something bigger. You're building a catalog. You're building something that is directed at a very specific target audience on a very specific subject in a very specific niche so that they go, I like this guy. I like this girl. I like what this thing is about. And when I want to know this, I come here. I come here. Because every time I come back, they do this one thing really well. Now listen, when you get bigger, you might be able to do more. You can push the walls out. How many of you guys have been to my channel and go, oh my gosh, Daniel is a Filmora channel. Thumbs up in the chat if you think that I am a Filmora channel. I can wait. No, I can't. I'm lying. I am totally lying. I won't wait for a thumbs up. But I bet you feel like Daniel, Filmora, you're the same thing. The reality of my channel is I'm trying to teach creators how to make better content in order to grow their YouTube channels. But the thing that connected for me was Filmora. And when I started seeing that was really connecting and everyone was into it, it's part of my value prop. It's what I use. I use Filmora. So I stayed with that. I stayed, I hung on to that and I went, you know what? I am gonna stay with this because I can see how it's, look at those thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, rock, beanie. Love you, love you brother, beanie draws. I stayed with it because I knew it was connecting with my target audience and still does. And I think you guys know by seeing you guys in the chat right now, I've got, from my angle, I've got 155 of you watching right now. I love you guys. I love, this is a makeup stream and we're 155 watching and only 84 hit the uh, thumbs up. So like, uh, what's with the rest of you? 73. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even good math. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm here telling you that there's a bigger thing to grow, but you have to start at some point. Focus on that one thing that connects. When you learn what connects on your channel, continue to do that. Do that more. When you see something that doesn't connect, don't do that. Stop doing that. Step back. Use your data to figure out what your channel should be doing. All right, because I think that a lot of people look outwards and they look at all the other channels and go, well, why are they doing well and I'm not doing well? Forget about them. You don't know where their views are coming from. You don't know if they bought those views. You don't know if they had a big Facebook group beforehand, if they had a big Instagram or Twitter following and they brought them all to. You don't know. Don't compare. Don't compare. Don't look at any other channel but your own and look at your own videos. And every time you upload one, you want it to do better than the last one. And if it isn't, figure out why. And that's where I want you to put all your focus. You. You. You have the power. You have the power to make your channel grow. I want you to embrace that. I want you to embrace that. That's what we're doing here today, okay? How are we doing in the chat? Everybody look okay? <laughs> Brian G. Johnson, thank you so much. Um, Brian's here. I can't, I can't praise him enough. He's been so instrumental to where I am. Um, and every time I see his name, he makes me smile. He makes me a better creator. He makes me a better creator because every morning I wake up and I message him and I'm like, Brian, I have an idea. And he's like, hang on, Tiger. <laughs> and slows me down and we talk things through. Um, and that's it. And I want, you know, you, that's what you should all have. That's why I'm here. That's why I have a channel. I want you all to reach out and go, Daniel, I'm trying this thing and I don't know if it's working and maybe it isn't. And that's why Brian and I have a Facebook group. I say Brian and I, I put myself second um, to do these things. We talk about these things. We talk about what it takes to grow a channel properly, right? 
And there are ways to do this that make a ton of sense, ton of sense. Embrace thinking of your content as a group because it will all support each other. Have you thought about this? Take a look at your channel. What's the highest performing video on your channel and why? You know, you could do this. Anyone got a channel they want me to pull up? Anyone? Anyone? I'll do it. I'm pulling you up. Who's right here? I'm pulling up Manly Man TV because I see you. Are you taking any more questions? I am. I'm taking your channel. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and let's go over and take a look at what you got going on over there. Man, look at this monster. 4,032 subscribers. Only has a clip to, uh, click to subscribe link up. Fantastic channel art. You wonder why some guys have their channel, some creators have their channels taking off. It's because they do the right things. They focus on, right here, he's focused all of his energy on keeping people on platform, right? That's what he said. He said, I am going to make sure that when people come to my channel, that the only thing they see is subscribe. Subscribe. Don't go to Instagram. Don't go to YouTube. Don't go somewhere else. Don't send them off platform. Keep them here. Here. I'd question some of this. I'd tell you maybe you want to think about sending these to a horizontal layout. Uh, uploads as your first. I know that that's probably to keep things recent. I think you can do that right here. I think you can do it with your um, two optimized and featured videos. One for uh, returning subscribers and one for new subscribers. Put a great um, video up here that's got a great conversion rate. And then for um, returning subscribers, put your newest video. It'll be right here. A lot of people put uploads here because they think, I need people to see my newest content. But sometimes these things don't always relate to each other. So put your newest piece of content right here and then start right off the bat with really strong playlists, really strong. Look at this one, tattoo advice for tips and beginners. I'd have that right up top. Forget uploads. Boom, I want to come right to your page and see tattoo advice for beginners. Man, I'm in. I'm in. This is the kind of thing that I want to see. I want you guys to think about how to make your channel work in a way that perhaps you haven't thought about making it work right now okay let's go crazy if you have a channel that has a strong performing video and i don't care what that is i want you to look inward and i want you to take the advice i'm giving you now and i want you to think about how it relates to each of you as an independent channel right maybe you're a gaming channel maybe you're a cooking channel maybe you're an exercise health fitness i don't care what you are fine go into your video tab and find the strongest performing video on that channel and figure out why. Figure out why. Make a playlist around that. Is it the keywords? Is that what it is? Is it the target, the topic, the title? Is it the way you made the thumbnail? Remember, we're only trying to connect with our target audience. We're just trying to reach out to those people who are all very different, but have that one thing in common with the thing we're talking about. And if you find you connect, make more of those videos. Target the same keywords. Think about a playlist strategy. If you have one great video that performs well on your channel, make a playlist around it. And then take that video and find the second strongest performing video and take that information and go back to the strongest one and put it in the end screens, put it in the cards, put it in the pinned comments, pinned comments, and in the description. And then go to your second strongest performing video and find the third strongest performing video and take all that information and put it in the second. So that when someone is watching the first strongest performing video in that playlist, everything in there keeps pushing you towards the second one. And when they watch the second, everything step, starts pushing you towards the third. It's in the end screens. It's in the cards. It's in the description. It's in the pinned comments. I'll pull up your channels and see if you've got pinned comments. A lot of people miss these obvious ways to find traffic. People say to me all the time, Daniel, I have great search traffic, right? Keyword research is all of it. For small channels, keyword research is all of it. But how do I get start getting suggested? Which by that, I really think you mean recommended. Because there's two different topics of YouTube recommendation. There is suggested videos and, and there is browse. And it just, it's the exact same thing. 
YouTube is just recommending them in different places. Suggested videos end up next to another video. Like you watch one video and then all of a sudden next to it, it's like, well, watch this one too. If you like that one, watch this one. Browse is one where you end up in the subscription feed and in people's home pages. That's something you can influence. You can influence suggested. Do you know that suggested traffic includes traffic from pinned links to videos in your description? How many of you have the next video pinned in your description? There are ways to do this. Make your content work together, together as a whole, not one video, many videos. On my channel, I sat with Brian G. Johnson. I said, I'm nobody. I had a, a extreme food reviews channel. We had 800 subscribers. I did it with my son. It was wonderful. I love my son. It was a great channel for fun. But I said, I want to do this more seriously. I can't even get monetization. Tell me what to do. He said, I can't tell you what to do. You got to find your focus. You got to find your focus and figure out what you're going to do. And we sat and we sat and, and we worked through it. I was a paid client to Brian G. Johnson. I said, we'll figure this out. I know how to do SEO. I know all the things. I came from a Google background. How do I do YouTube? And we found, we decided on, hey, man, you use Phil Moore for all your editing. What if you thought about doing creation, how to do make better videos? You make really cool videos. I love your videos. They're fun. Show people how to make cooler videos. I'm like, that's a good idea. And show them how to do it using Phil Mora. I'm like, that's a really good idea. And I did the research and I found out that people actually use Phil Mora that beyond me. Not just me, other people. Other people were using Phil Mora. So how easy was this for me to go, okay, me, guy in India, guy in Pakistan, uh, girl in Great Britain, girl in China, you know, we all connected. We all connected. We have nothing in common, but we all use Filmora. And I started doing the research, and I went, oh, I want to make Filmora videos. That's what I'm going to do. And I started looking up with the, the, the Keyword Explorer. Have you guys used the Keyword Explorer in buddy? Let's start doing some Filmora topics. I'm in. Count me in. And then I realized, oh, crap. I can't rank. There's guys with hundreds of thousands of views. Filmora has its own channel on YouTube. How am I going to ever get noticed? So I made a bunch of videos that weren't just Filmora. They were Filmora Pan and Zoom, Filmora Dissolve Effect, Filmora Shake Effect, Filmora Crop and Zoom. I made more Filmora videos. Go to my channel. What do I have, 60, 70? But what happened is, is each smaller one started performing well, and they were all tied together as a group. When one started to do better, it brought the other ones up and they worked collectively to bring my channel up because I picked a very narrow focus and I hung onto it like a pit bull. All right. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about finding your niche, finding your target audience, finding what you have in common with people you don't know, but you have that one thing in common. And you're going to figure out what that is, and you're going to talk about that. And you're not going to let it go. And you're going to find a way to make sure that your videos get discovered. And you're going to find a way to make sure that your content is better than the next guy. You don't have to have the perfect content. You don't have to have 70% average view duration. The highest performing video on my channel has a 32% average view duration. But it's better than the next guy. And it's got 170,000 views, give or take, 65, 165, somewhere in there. You tell me. Because it's just better than the next guy. I was passionate about it. I stayed on it. And I just didn't let it go. So let's talk about some of your channels. Let's talk about some of your channels. Let me see what we've got for questions in here. And I'm going to run along here. What are we at? 624. Andrew, tell me when to shake it loose, brother. I love you. I'm getting close. <laughs> um, I'm going to check this out. Charles, uh, oh, I love this channel. Chicks with Dixon. <laughs> Chicks with Dixon. Yeah, I'm a fan. Love the show, Daniel. I would love to grow my channel, but I don't know, but I don't want to avoid adult content. I'm a doomed. Am I doomed? I would love to grow my channel, but I don't know, uh, but I don't want to avoid adult content. Am I doomed? Are you doomed? No. No, you're not doomed. You're not doomed. Think about two things. On YouTube, sometimes people think that 
monetization is the goal. And this is what I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know a lot of young channels go, oh my gosh, if I can only get monetized, that would be the world to me. Because then I'll be getting paid for making my videos. I am there. I was with you. Until I got monetized. And then I went, oh, well, that's nice. That's a little extra money. But it all came down to that money only got big when my videos did super well. And once the videos did super well, other companies came to me and said, hey, we noticed your video's doing really well. We'd like to talk to you about paying you to do one for us. So the monetization thing became silly. It will become silly if you get to the point where you're monetized, which I think every one of you should set as a goal. If you're interested in making money, that should be your first goal. See if you can get it monetized. Go to 1,000 subscribers. Get to 4,000 watch hours in a year. I think you can do it. You just have to connect with your target audience. But don't expect that to be the end game because it isn't. It isn't. It's like the couple at the altar going, well, we're married now. Everything's easy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Life has just begun. So I want you to think about how to do bigger things than that. And if you think that your channel is going to be a little edgy and may not be against YouTube policies, but might be something that may not get monetized, make the decision for yourself. YouTube is not a democracy. It's, it's not freedom of speech. And you might make a channel that is perfectly fine to be on YouTube, but it doesn't qualify for monetization. That does not mean you need to change your channel. You just need to decide what the goal of your channel is. Because I'll tell you right now, I make a heck of a lot more money from everything else I do. I make a living off being a content creator, and it isn't from the money I get from AdSense. That could go away today, and it doesn't make a difference. It's everything else I've set up. So if your channel goal is to create a thing, right? If you're into horror pictures, slasher films, something that YouTube might go, ooh, that's a little edgy. If that's what you're going to be, do that. As long as you understand that if your only goal was to be monetized, that could be problematic. If your goal was to create that huge channel in that niche and own it and get all sort of sponsorship money from other people who will make up for the fact that you didn't break YouTube terms of service or guidelines, but they can't monetize you because we kind of, they kind of like stuff to be family friendly to a certain degree. That's okay. That is okay. That is okay to go, I'm not monetized and intentionally. I had a client who had a channel that was just under half a million subscribers, drove a, a million plus views per, per video, and didn't monetize any of the channel. And I looked at the numbers and I went, you know, if you just turned on monetization without any effort, you'd be making an extra $75,000 a year. And he said to me, I don't need it. I don't need it. Because if I turn on monetization, that means my competitors can put their ads before mine for a similar thing. And they might draw people away. And the money I'm making from people checking out my videos and going to my website is seven figures. So what does five figures have to do, right? It's like if someone told you, like, listen, you want to make three bucks, but you lose a dime? Or do you want to make five bucks and you lose a nickel? That was the decision he made, and I went, it makes a ton of sense. So sometimes you have to understand what your channel's about, what your goals are, what you're trying to do, and make that decision. Uh, by the way, uh, Costume Co. is, the correct, way, is the, cre the correct way to put on Costume CEO. I learned that the other day, and I'm going to make that clear. Heidi, thank you. Um, I'm going to look back into the questions here. I want to try to get through as many as I can before Andrew tells me to go home. <laughs> um, Cuboid, I'm getting views but not subscribers, and my view counts have really dropped. What, uh, what's a good way to get views and subs? All right, Cuboid, let me see if we can get over to you. Let me see if I can actually find your channel here, um, if this is it. Cuboid. Uh, I'm not seeing it off the bat. I wish there was a link there. Um, the one thing I'm going to keep telling you is connect with your, with your target audience. When your target audience loves your content, push YouTube aside. The audience does not follow YouTube. It's not like YouTube starts recommending your stuff and you get more views. When you get more views from your audience, YouTube recommends it more. Okay, backwards. Go backwards. Push YouTube out of the equation. 
They do not matter. I mean, they do. But all you should be trying to do, make sure that when you put up a video, your target audience loves it. And you get a few more views than you did on your last video. And the more you keep doing that, the more YouTube will suddenly take notice and go, oh, Cuboid's video this time got 30 views in the first hour and his last video only got 15. Maybe we'll, you know, something's going on here. I said, they're liking this more. Let me push this out a little more, Cuboid. And they'll give, they actually track your viewers' habits and see what they're doing. And when the minute they see that your viewers are doing better, they want to be on that. The minute they think your viewers are liking your content more than they did the last piece of content you put up, YouTube will follow suit. It's like a, I say this all the time, it's like a clicky group of like uh, kids in high school, right? They all go like, oh, did you like it? Uh, I don't know. Did you like it? They're waiting for someone else to make the decision. YouTube wants your audience to tell them this is a good video. So you make content that your audience loves, that your audience loves, that they connect with, okay? If you can continue to do that, you'll grow. And the more views you get, the more subscribers you will get. Forget about subscribers off the top. I know that's what I'm talking about here, but it's views first. The more views you can get, views turn into subscribers, not the other way around. I could, we could put 1,000 subscribers on your channel right now, but if they don't like your content, they're not going to click when your next video uploads, and then YouTube is going to get the idea, huh, well, they didn't watch. I guess Cuboid's material and his content isn't very good. I guess we won't recommend the next one as much. Right? That's what we want to beat. We're going to beat them. We're going to make sure that every video we put out does well, a little better than the last one. And if it doesn't, we want to find out why it didn't so we can correct for that. Okay? All right, where are we at right here? I've got multiple screens going on. We're not playing around. This is a late stream, and I'm trying to hit everything. <laughs> um, one of the things that I do want to talk to you about and I don't want to forget about um, is your subscription sources. This is something that I don't think a lot of um, a lot of you understand, like where you're getting subscribers from. If you were to guess, like we talk about building your channel out, your channel is like your storefront. It's so important. I want your channel art to look good. I want your links to keep them on platform. I want you to have playlists that all link together that create content in groups. So when someone comes to your channel, they go, oh my gosh, I love this video, but there's more. You got to remember, here's what YouTube is thinking about. When you have one video that takes off, let's say it is a viral video. Let's say you're the guy or you're the girl that has that one video that takes off and gets a million subscribers tonight. What do you do next? What do you do next? Do you sit back and watch and go, well, look, look at the views. Do you know how many creators I've watched kill their channels because they had no idea what to do next? When you have a video that takes off, viewers are enjoying that video. You are sitting back and watching those views go up and you're getting excited. Oh my gosh. YouTube is sitting there going, what can I serve this viewer next to keep them watching? You want to be that next piece of content. And everything that you can do on your channel to be that next piece of content will improve your chances of your channel growing faster. Why do you think I have so many Filmora videos on my channel? Because I found something that connected and I said, well, if they like that one, I'm going to beat the crap out of this and I'm going to make sure that every other... Every time they watch one Filmora video, they're going to be flooded from every angle with me. I'm going to put it in my end screens, my cards, my description. I'm going to put it in my pinned comments. And with you, and if the other ones do well, YouTube will start recommending it next and the up next suggested or put it on their homepage as browse. I want nobody to type Filmora into a search engine or if they're an active subscriber, open up their YouTube on their browser in any way they do it on their desktop or in their mobile device and not see me. I want me. I want a, my new video to be there so that they can see it and they can go, hey, if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. And if I can make sure I make stuff that they like, I start that snowball going downhill. I keep making content that YouTube goes, wow, every time he puts out a Filmora video, they do pretty well. Maybe we'll push this out a little more, but that's just me. Maybe you're cooking. Maybe you're gaming. Maybe you're... Pick your thing. Pick your thing.
just be great. Just be great. I want you to be great. And it's easy. It's in your grasp. It is not YouTube. It is you. You have the power to make your channel go over the top right now, right now. And if I go to your channel, let me stop. I'm not even going to look at a channel right now, but I'm going to give you some tips. If I go to your channel and you've got videos on there that target three different things, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know I do gaming. But yeah, I also had that video up that it was me and my cousins and we went on vacation. And I put the vacation video up. Let's be serious. Are you serious? Because I'm serious and I want you to be serious. Your videos need to target one specific audience. One specific audience. Remember what we were talking about earlier? Remember how I said that? The thing that your channels need to do, the way we're going to connect, the way we're going to connect is everything. If you're over here and you're making videos that one's on travel, but then the next week it's not on travel, these viewers won't connect, right? Because if it's, if it's travel and then it's sports, the viewers don't connect. And maybe that top viewer tunes away. And he leaves, and he doesn't come back, and he doesn't click. And when he doesn't click on your sports video, YouTube says, oh, I guess that, you, that video must stink, must suck. Because if it didn't, the first viewer up top would have clicked on it. And it, not that it's, it was a bad video. It just didn't connect with your target audience. Make videos that are all in one subject, serving and honoring one target audience, Okay. This is how you will grow. If I go to your channel and you say, I'm doing everything I can, but I see that you've made videos on six different subjects, you're not doing all you can. I want you to niche down. I want you to find your target audience. And I want to be specific about this too when I'm talking to you guys um, so that we're, we understand that we are all on the same page here. If you can't figure out who your target audience is, there's a really simple way to do this. And it's to come up with this value proposition, right? And I've talked about this earlier. In one sentence, what your channel's about, who your target audience is, why they should watch. One sentence. One sentence. If you can do that, it'll make all the other decisions that come afterwards so much easier. What should I make videos about? Well, if they don't fall into your target, if they don't fall into your value proposition, don't make those videos. Yeah, but I could do really great because there's this new Avengers movie out, and if I do a review on that, yeah, but you're not your fishing channel. Don't do that video. Serve your audience stay true to the path find that thing that you do consistently over and over again and then you'll start growing let me tell you something about my channel this is another thing too some of you might see analytics and you go oh my gosh i uh i did you know 300 views last month and i gained 500 subscribers that means in the next month i could maybe get a thousand right you think if last year i did this much then next year, I'll double that, right? If I could just keep doing what I did and I'll double it. Absolutely incorrect. YouTube growth is exponential and cumulative. And if those sound like fancy words, they are. I just learned them. I read them out of a dictionary earlier. But I'm using them right now because I did learn what they meant. And what I want you to understand is that I took, my channel is just under a year old, right? We've said that. I've just hit 15,000 subscribers this morning. It took me five months to hit 1,000. Five months to hit 1,000. Why was that? Because I didn't have as much content out. It took me a while to build more content. Because even if you loved one piece of content, I didn't have enough to follow up. I needed a lot of pieces of great content. I didn't have 75 pieces of content up. I had 10. It can only grow so fast. My channel can only grow so fast. If you think your channel isn't growing fast enough, how much content do you have up? And how much of it has connected with your target audience? Not only that, once I got to 2030 and I started growing faster, I went from five months to hit 1,000 subscribers. Within 10 months, I hit 10,000 subscribers because I didn't let go. Like a pit bull, I hung on to the thing I was doing right? My target audience likes this. This connects. Don't make different videos. Just stick with it. And that 10,000 turned to 15,000 in six and a half weeks, five and a half weeks. We're not even, yeah, we're two and a half weeks away from my one year anniversary for this channel. 
I went from 10 to 15 because it's cumulative. It's like a snowball going downhill. All those pieces of content continue to do well and bring in new views, new subscribers, because they're all relating around that one target audience and making sure that they are honored. And you, it's not about one video anymore. It's about all of them. And the more you build it out, the snowball rolls downhill and picks up more snow and gets bigger. Cumulative effect. Cumulative effect. This is what I want you to do. This is the path. Find that one path. Stay on it. Roll downhill. Make sure you honor that audience and that all of these videos honor those that viewer's needs so that you don't make something they don't want to see. Make things always that you know they do want to see. Okay? How are we doing out there? 176 watching now. Well, I don't know if that's a uh, two-buddy record for a uh, stream that went sour and we came back at the end of the day, but uh, uh, Andrew right now is probably thinking, you were supposed to t stop, you know, a while ago. I'm going to talk a little longer, Andrew. Just shut me off when you're done. We're going to wrap this up pretty quick, but I'm not going to let you guys go without talking about a couple of your channel reviews. Who's got a channel out there they want me to take a look at? 19 minutes. I get 19 minutes, Andrew says. That's plenty. Let's look at some of your channels. I want to talk to you. Um, let me do this. Let me pull up the questionnaires. I know I've missed some questions. I've had a lot to say today. I promise I will be doing this, not just today. I will be returning to the TubeBuddy channel on a regular basis. You will see me probably once a month, and I will try to fit as much knowledge as I can in here. I'm also a channel consultant for TubeBuddy. So if you ever are interested in hiring consultants, we do have the TubeBuddy page. You're getting this for free. It's expensive. This is expensive advice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, let me look at some of the channels. Um, Adventures, let me see. Daniel, it's risky. I've got in Adventures in Dirt. Me, me, me. Well, you know, I'm going to pick one out of here. I, you guys have worked so hard. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. i got to pick something. I'm going to pick more than one, guys. Don't worry. Um, let me do this. I want to pick up Adventures in Dirt first. Let me just find it. Adventures in Dirt. There you are. This guy's been very loyal to the channel. I've seen him many, many times. I want to take a look. Let me, uh, let me send it over there so you can see what I'm seeing. And you see, let's see, here we go. Adventures in Dirt, great channel, right? Subscribe now, that's all he has up here. He's got one other link that goes off to merchandise. I'd think about if this is not, if, let me get my pen. If this link, I said keep them on the channel, right? Don't keep them on platform. If you send people elsewhere, YouTube wants you to keep them here. So if this link right here isn't really doing a lot, if it's not making you thousands of dollars, get rid of it. Stick with subscribe until you get to the point where you want to be. Because you're only, and I don't want to say only, 3,051 subscribers is huge. But if you're trying to just grow your channel, think about how you're sending people off platform. I'm going to scroll down. The first thing I see, this is great. See this? The Weekly Dirt. He's got a playlist with a nice description. That means he's optimized his playlist. Do you know that playlists can show up in search just the way a video can? Right? The thing I would ask is, do people search for The Weekly Dirt? Maybe you have a better name, just the way you did top four metal detecting YouTube videos, right? That's how you can potentially have your playlist do a little better. Think about how you optimize these, my friend, because you've got some that are killing it. Look at this. Two months ago, metal detecting finds gold. Look at that thumbnail. He's got 10,000 views because it pops. Find of a lifetime. Metal detecting finds gold. This is something that people are interested in right here. When people find something compelling, they will click. Be compelling or be something that they're looking for. That is the way you'll get 10,000 views as opposed to 4,000, which is fantastic. But the more compelling you are, the more you make people want to love this thing and go, wow, I, I would click on this and go, I'm not really into adventures and gold and finding, and but this is like... This is crazy. Look at the find of a lifetime. Look at how this jumps out. The more you can compel people to want to watch, the better your channel will have as chances of moving um, your content forward and reaching a target audience. Um, you've got some different things going on here that I don't know if I love the vertical playlist. I like horizontal. When I have to scroll to keep finding a new video, I'd say lay these out horizontal. That's small. Um, and I need, to, I need to show you guys something here that really... Um, I'm going to do this here so that you understand. I think a lot of people get wrapped up in building out their channels, and I think that's phenomenal. I think it's phenomenal. 
I think there is nothing better than building out your storefront because that is your storefront. That is your storefront. Your homepage, let me switch over. Your homepage is your storefront. So the better organized and the better it looks and the more clear it is and the more focused it is, the better people will stay tuned because they go, I get it. I get it. This channel makes sense. It does this. It fills that one space in my life. I don't need it to be everything. I need it to be this. I need it to be, I man, when I want to go check out like some cool treasures that were found, Adventures in Dirt. So cool. So cool. Adventures in Dirt. It says it to me, right? But the other thing I want you to think about, and I'm going to show you this, is the way that you convert, right? Because you can find subscribers. And if I'm looking to the right, I'm just pulling up some analytics for you so I can make sure you guys see this. Um, this is something you don't know. If I were to ask you guys a question, where do most of your subscribers come from? What do you think? Like we build channels, right? And we have videos and we have like links in our videos that say click here to subscribe for more. And we have links in our channel art. And there's all these places that people can subscribe. There's so many places that they can subscribe. Where do you think the majority of subscribers click that subscribe button? Let me show you. Let me show you. This is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. This is from my own channel. I hope you can read this. The second right here, YouTube channel, that is my channel. That is the, they stop by my homepage and they subscribe by clicking the subscribe button somewhere in there. And they go, oh, thanks, Daniel. We found your channel. It's so awesome. 317 in the last 28 days. Guess where the other 2,561 people decided to click the button from my YouTube watch page? YouTube watch page. And I am a pretty poor scribbler here. Let me see if I can um, <laughs> if I can make sure this clicks over a bit. Let me see. Uh, right here, right here. Spy pot. Let me scry that. Let me see. Can you see that better? YouTube watch page. I didn't do a good job of centering that. I apologize. So here is YouTube watch page. The one underneath it, I can clear this out. This is my YouTube channel. And this is how many subscribers I got in the last 28 days, right? But the very top, which is killing everybody, this one right here, that is my YouTube watch page with 20, over 2,500, 2,561 20, subscribers from this thing called my YouTube watch page. And you go, well, Daniel, what the heck is your YouTube watch page? What is my YouTube watch page? That is the very page that they found your video on. You know when you click play? Like, I'm going to click it. I'm watching. I'm in. Let's watch it. That's the page that pops up with your video, the description, the comments underneath, and that subscribe button. That's where the majority of your subscribers are going are to subscribe to your channel. To you. Out in the field. Out doing that thing properly. All those videos working together. Videos, videos, videos. Content. We love channels. I want you to optimize your channels. But I'm going to tell you that that's not where most people are going to get invested in you. They're going to find you out in the field. They're going to find you by stumbling across one video. And maybe that leads to another video because you set up your playlist properly and it linked to another one. And maybe they watch two or three. The one thing YouTube doesn't really tell us is how many of your videos they watched before they decided to, scribe on, to subscribe on that one. We just know this one they subscribed on. But did they watch two or three of your other ones before and go, I'm in. I'm in. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you can get your channel to build content that works together, if you can get pers a person to watch one video, great. But if you can get them to watch two or three in a row, that viewer is more likely to subscribe. Because they have binge-watched your material, they become invested and they went, wow, this channel didn't do one thing well. They've got more than one piece of content. This is not a one-trick pony. This is a channel that can actually offer me something that I'm looking for every week. That's what I want you to build. Build that channel. If you're a gaming channel, figure out a way to not just keep putting up this, you know, I put up this video, I put up that video, I did this, and they're randomly going up and hoping that something will connect. Build something bigger than that one video. Make them connect. 
target the same keywords, make all of those videos that start to perform, do more. Go into your videos tab. If you're on your channel, here's a real easy way to do this. Let me show you one more thing. I, Andrew's yelling at me. I can feel him breathing down my neck right now. I can feel it. I want to go over here for a second. I'm going to show you my channel. Let me get out of this mess. And I'm going to show you, um, or I'll show you anybody's channel, whoever's channel I got going on here. I'm going to go with Exploring with the Nut because he's here, but let me show you. This could be any one of you. Click on the Videos tab. Go over to Sort By, and you will see Most Popular. Click on that, and it will tell you which of your videos are performing the best. I found five guns while diving the waters under a bridge. I found three guns float, uh, float tube magnet fishing. Does it sound funny that his top two performing videos were talking about guns? If I were him, I would build a playlist that were about guns found underwater, and I would put this one first, right? I would put this top performing video right here at the beginning, and the end screens, pinned comments, cards, and the description would all link right to this one. The one about I found three guns. And I would absolutely keep linking these together so that every time someone found one, it was like, that was really cool. That was really cool. You're the guy going, if you thought that was cool, I've got another video talking about that. You like finding guns underwater? I have another video. I have another one. Check this video out because I have more. Because like we said before, while you're excited about getting views, while the viewer is enjoying your content, YouTube is thinking about one thing. What can we serve this viewer next to keep them watching. And you want to do everything you can to be that next piece of content. And that is the key to growing your channel. I've absolutely overrun my time and I went way late today. Guys, I can't thank you enough for hanging out. We're doing this again. And I promise I'll pick up where we left off. Thank you so much. Peace. I love you very much. And I appreciate you guys being patient today because I've, uh, I've been tough. I've been tough. But we love you. Andrew, thank you.